politics aside, but I think it's a, I think it's a good beginning for the president and the president and his government to recognize that we need to pray. And that's where it starts for the nation. You remember what God did in Egypt in the book of Exodus. Um, when God moves and he said, the, your sin has risen to a place where I sit. And God decides to move to judge a nation. It takes, God warns, God send, send uh, God usually will send messages of warning before he moves on judgment. But also I've been talking to um, a lot of other pastors um, about what's happening in Uganda. Uh, there are a lot of godly people that are going home. God is taking a lot of sense. And you look at their lives and you say, hmm, this person or these people, they seem to be innocent. And so I, I feel like as we repent for the nation, for our individual lives, we need also to realize that sometimes when God is doing the harvest, when, uh, when God is moving, there are a lot of other things that God does that we as humans, we don't, we don't understand. Maybe we will understand later. This thing about many deaths in the same week, in the same month, in the same country, it is not something that you can explain by medics or by some kind of explanation from the Bible. But it's totally, it sounds like God is picking up many saints and taking them home, which is part of the harvest. You remember in the book of Matthew when the apostles uh, came to, to ask Jesus a question and Jesus said that the harvest, the field is the world. And the, 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 um, the wheat that was sown was the word of God. It came and it grew up together, the good wheat and also the bad wheat. And Jesus said, leave it, let it grow together. But what will separate the two will be the harvest. And the angels will come and harvest. So, you know, we live in this world. It's a fallen world. However much we want to fix it, However much we want it to be perfect, perfect, it is a fallen world. That's one of the things we really need to understand. It is a fallen world, and we also need to understand we are just pilgrims walking through this life. And anytime God calls us home, any one of us can be called any back home anytime. And um, so we need to understand us as believers that you need to be prepared in your life to meet the Lord because that's our ultimate goal is to meet the Lord face to face. And, and so we need to work with that in mind. But when it comes to national issues, you need to understand that the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, Number one, humility is very, very key. The other day I was talking about brokenness. And you need, you, we really need to admit that we're Ugandans. We may not be the people that are committing murder or stealing government funds or doing any kind of evil, but we are Ugandans. So in this case, we identify ourselves as Ugandans and we take on the identity of Uganda. That's what intercessors do. You take on an, 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 the, 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 the government of the play, or, or you take up the place of whoever you are representing and pick up their burden and it becomes your burden. So this time we are taking up and picking up the burden of a nation. And we are repenting on behalf of our government, behalf of our leaders, on behalf of the population of Uganda. And we have to be, to, to, to understand that if we, the people of God, can take up that position and stand in the gap, God is willing in his word. He says, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their land, forgive their sin, and come and heal their land. God has to hear. Then he has to come and forgive and then heal. So there will, there, there will be no healing unless there is forgiveness. Then there will be no forgiveness unless someone stands and pleads for mercy. 
and uh, and so in a time like this when uh, when judgment is passing over the land which we assume that's really happening in our land that there is judgment on our land what happens the people that are called by god's name will humble themselves and and beg for mercy for god from god and this is what mercy does mercy ask for more time doesn't remove the sin but mercy is time extended so the judgment is preferred to another day and so we we ask that god will extend this judgment to the future and then after he does he gives us more time it is our duty as christians to pick up the cross and walk uh, and uh, and pronounce to the people that god if we don't repent the judgment will come back by sharing the gospel of truth and so that's what we are going to be uh, praying for in the next few days we really need the mercy of god on our land but also on the and uh, the, the other side the people that are losing their loved ones we don't need to tell them that god has judged you i i am um, i personally decided to believe that you know what some of these people are so righteous they are saints of god and god is just picking them taking them home and i believe that's going to be a trend for the next many years a lot of people there's a generation that's crossing but there is also a new generation coming up and things will change around i, I believe this is the season but prayer changes everything so um i don't know who um i'm encouraging here but i just want to encourage you that you don't give up you, you you don't just say oh my god everyone is dying therefore there is no need to to live on you need to remember the words the the the, the prophetic word of god over your life you need to remember that you are you you have a purpose to live like, like yesterday someone called me in the morning very early in the morning and told me a dream they had about me and my family and the future now that dream was very very fundamental for me because it was spreading out the next 30 40 50 years of my life and now i'm um, i'm starting to plan for that time that kind of length of time because i didn't know what will happen but now the prophetic word that god has given me is giving me direction on a personal level so on a personal note you really need to dig back and remember every prophetic word that has ever been spoken over you over your family but also your ministry and number two you need to remember the 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 the, the prophetic word that god has spoken over uganda so when you are praying for the nation remind the lord of his promises over the nation remind the lord that this this nation was chosen and it has a prophetic call and then as you call upon mercy the lord will hear you because of the word that he, uh, he has already spoken and so with those many words i don't want to say a few with those many words i want to give it back to pastor po thank you pastor po for leading us thank you for standing in the gap especially in this time of covid god bless you all Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Robert. Yeah, and um, by the way, church, tomorrow at 2 p.m., we have arranged uh, our own altar to really pray for the nation. So whatever you are doing, we've given opportunity for those who want to be part of the national prayers on TV. Uh, but when that is done, please make sure that at 2 we come back to Zoom. We'll be circulating a Zoom link uh, which we will use for that. We will do it for one hour and we will have the pastors uh, leading in that particular altar. So kindly diarize it. 2 p.m. tomorrow, between 2 and 3 p.m., we'll be coming back to Zoom. A link will be shared with you. Uh, but this evening, I want to welcome one of our very own pastors uh, who is gifted by God. Um, all of us know him. 
And together with me, let's welcome Pastor Solomon Mayanja to share with us what the Lord has put on his heart for us tonight. Pastor Solomon. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Paul. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, hallelujah. We are going to read from uh, the book of First Samuel, chapter 10, from verses 1 to 7. The book of First Samuel, chapter 10, from verses 1 to verses 7. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, it is not because the Lord has anointed you commander of his inheritance. When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelza. And they will say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you saying, what shall I do about my son? Verse three, then you shall go on forward from there and come to the Terebith, the Terebith tree of Tabor. There are three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistine, the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flat, and a harp before them. And then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you'll prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come to you, that you will do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. Uh, I'd like to share briefly about the atmosphere of change, the atmosphere of change. We are in the season, we are in the atmosphere of change. Whether we want to believe it or not, things are changing and they will never be the same again. Things will never get back where we have been. There is an atmosphere of change. Governments are looking for solutions on what to do. Africans are blaming Americans. Africans are blaming whites. Everyone is blaming one another. And it's all this is happening because of the atmosphere of change we are experiencing today. In our families, things are changing. In our churches, things are changing. In our offices where we work from, things are changing. Where we, the companies which used to have a uh, hundred workers, time is coming when they will remain with five workers because they are learning to do things with few people, with few workers. Schools here, uh, universities, it wasn't a norm to study online. But now it is becoming a norm, people to study online. It's the atmosphere of change. 
even right now where you are, you feel the atmosphere of change. You use not to dress the way you dress when you're going to town. There is an atmosphere of change. Now here we see Samuel walks with oil, with a flask of oil to Saul, to anoint him to be a king. I want us to understand the time Samuel walks to Saul to anoint him, this is the time when there was chaos in Israel. The chaos in the kingdom is described in the last verse of the book of Judges, in Judges 21, verses 25. The Bible says in those, there, those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Every time everyone does what he thinks is right, there is going to be chaos. We have seen this when we are driving in Kampala. A taxman squeezes himself somewhere and he thinks he's right. And the border border man will also squeeze himself somewhere. I thought Uganda was the most chaotic nation until I went to Cameroon. I saw chaos. I realized that Cameroon is more chaotic than Uganda. Everyone, whatever they do, they think they are right. Whatever they're doing, they think it is right. It's a one way, but you find everyone is driving in the same, that one way coming from another direction. And you wonder, why don't they use the other side? It is chaotic. We have seen these things are happening in the body of Christ. Everyone is doing what he wants. You see pastors are chasing the ways are marrying others. And you cannot say anything to them. They think what they are doing is right. And we think God can sit in heaven and continues to watch. Do things happen without bringing order to, to the church? Churches in Europe and America, you hear? People are allowed to marry people of the same sex. Chaos is going on. And they have scriptures to defend themselves. We are living in chaos right now. We are living in a time everything is okay. You can do whatever you want to do. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can say whatever you want to say. Chaos. Chaos is everywhere, children of God. It was the same time, it was the same thing which was happening those days in Israel. There was no king. They had no king. Everyone was doing whatever he wanted. And God wanted to bring order he wanted to bring order to the society. And it is this chaos, this text reaches out to us. It is in this chaos the Lord chooses to appoint himself a king. We must understand children of God 
that we are in chaos and the Lord is choosing himself, the kings who are going to reign. Whatever is happening, the Lord is bringing order to, to his kingdom, is bringing order to his kingdom. God operates in the kingdom because he's the king. He sees himself as a king. Says I'm the king of kings. Above me, there is no other God. He is the almighty God. He's the king of glory. Even when Moses went to Mount Sinai and he got the commandments, God was trying to establish a kingdom. So it's now, this is the constitution. This is going to be your regulations. These are going to be the rule to govern you because every kingdom must have a constitution, must have regulations, must have rules to govern. And says now, after you becoming a kingdom, you be my people and I shall be your God. But now we see the children of Israel as they moved from Egypt. There were tribes, 12 tribes, but they struggled to see themselves as a kingdom. They saw themselves in tribes. Do you know that children of God, believers, born again, we have failed to see ourselves as a kingdom? We do things the way we want. We don't see We don't see ourselves as a kingdom. Isn't that chaos? But God planned this time. And he knew that a time like this I will bring order to the earth. I will bring order to my kingdom. That's why he couldn't let Hannah have a son, Samuel, before the time he had set for Israel. He couldn't. And he knew Samuel will come at a time like this when I'll be putting Israel to order. There are things we have been believing God for that we could not have them because that time, God's timing wasn't yet. But now we have entered the season where things are going to happen. Suddenly, things are going to happen on an accelerated speed. You know the scripture which says a plowman overtakes the reaper? It is the season we are entering into. The atmosphere of change is bringing us into that season of accelerated speed, where the kingdom of God is going to expand, where you're going to see, you wait after this COVID, you're going to see Ugandans going to Europe, going to America to take the gospel. It's going to happen. There is going to be a breakout. Hallelujah. Now, Sam, he says, he tells Samuel that I'm going to do things in Israel. Hmm? Remember, Saul becomes the first king of Israel. And he says, I'm going to do things in Israel. Whoever will hear them, their ears, Shouting is saying all these things in the middle of chaos. They have no king. But instead, he's promising that things is going to be doing. Now we see Saul. I mean, we see Samuel anointing Saul to be a king, not according to the will of people only. But God knew it was going to happen. And it couldn't happen 
without God. God had to be part of it. Because you cannot make someone a king. You must have the sovereign power to transfer the power. You can't make me a king if you don't have any power. God had to transfer a power. Now, he had begun a succession plan of kings in the earth. You remember those ones who said, we also want a king like the other ones. He's, he had begun, he had started, he started this time a succession plan of kings here in the earth. Now he chooses the son of Kish, that giant, that tall man, to be the first king of Israel. Now, there was a challenge. Saul saw himself as a son of Kish. He did not see himself as a king of Israel. Now, when Samuel saw Saul, his main job was to make Saul know who he was. So didn't understand himself as a king. Now he has to redefine himself like how God sees him. We have many people today. We are looking at ourselves as failures, as a son of so and so, yet God is seeing you as the king. It's the same thing which was happening to Saul. He was seeing himself as a son of Kish. And God was seeing him as a son, as a king. Praise the Lord. Now, in the midst of chaos, the Lord appoints a son of Kish to be anointed as the king, the first king of Israel. We said in the middle of chaos, like the chaos we are having today in, in the world, not only Uganda, but in the entire world. You know, it's very interesting when, they when we get a prophecy that uh, the, the, the revival will come from Uganda, it will begin from Uganda. Isn't it very exciting? But we forget that anointing comes through adversity. But we just think it's just going to happen. The, we are, the revival is starting with us. This chaos we see today is giving birth to the order of our nation. The atmosphere of change which is coming is not only in the church, it's also in the political realm. It's going to happen in all the spheres of influence. And many shall see it. Many shall see it. Now, there is something I want you to see here. Chaos will never stop a kingdom. Chaos will never stop a kingdom. The kingdom of God will continue, will survive. Whether everyone dies, the kingdom of God will never stop. The kingdom will always prevail regardless of the chaos. 
for years and years, the kingdom has survived. There has been outbreak of diseases. The kingdom has survived. There has been outbreak of chaos. There has been very stubborn leaders like Amin who thought they could stop Christianity in this nation. But still, the kingdom has survived. But now you see, it's in the middle of chaos. But there is the flow of the oil. You see, the oil flows in the midst of chaos. Samuel is, is anointing, is carrying the flask of the anointing to anoint. So, in the middle of chaos, the oil is flowing and chaos is going on. And the oil is still flowing. Even now, what is happening today? The oil is flowing. You may, you may have lost a beloved one to, to COVID, but the oil is still flowing. You may have been chased out of the house, but the oil is still flowing. We need to praise God because we are coming into the glory where the oil is going to flow. The oil is flowing. And that's what matters, the oil to flow. Yes, you began with the resolutions of the year. I want to achieve this. This is what I want to have this year. I will, I will start my, the foundation of, of my house. What matters, the oil is flowing. You are supposed to, to marry th this man. But because of what is happening, you have to push your wedding. What matters? The oil is still flowing. You see, you can change everything. You can change a car. You can change clothes. But if you don't get this oil, you will change nothing. When God was getting ready, to bring a change. Hmm? We must understand, he didn't blow a whistle. When God is about to bring a change, the oil begins flowing. Today, the oil is flowing. It is flowing. And there cannot be a change if the oil doesn't flow. The flow of the oil is an indication of the change. The oil is the symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And whenever the Holy Spirit moves, there will be a change. That's what I'm saying. There was darkness until the Holy Spirit moved. The church wasn't born till the Holy Spirit moved. When the Holy Spirit moved, Mary, Virgin Mary got pregnant. She was pregnant the moment and she, she had a baby of the Holy Spirit. God is not just moving to entertain us. He's moving to change. He's here to change you. Yes, today we are calling as a church to repent. But God is calling you, me, we are the church. And we are saying we would have met as a church. You see, this repentance is good when we have met the, as the entire church. Why is it that before, just before this lockdown, we had a long season of prayer and fasting, repenting. And the Lord continues to say, we should repent. Because there are some people who have refused to change. As a church, we have repented. And God is looking at you as a person to change. 
How do you want God to change your life when you're ignoring him, when he wants to change you? You see, Samuel didn't come to anoint the ground. Samuel didn't come to anoint the ground. The oil comes to the head. And now I want you to see, being anointed is a messy business. Leave the things we do now in the church. We get some small oil hmm, and we put on, we sprinkle, we put on your, we smear on your face. This one, this kind of anointing was so messy that the guy came with a flask, a full flask, and it had, he had to pour on the guy. If you had your hair, you had made your hair, it would mess it up. If you had your white suit, it would mess it up. There is a messy anointing. There is no way God is going to anoint you and you remain the same person. You remain in the same place. This anointing, this kind of anointing we are receiving in this season is going to mess us up. It's going to mess you. People are going to stop loving so much themselves. And they will be lovers of God. Hallelujah. You see, there is no way you're going to get this kind of, I, 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 I called it messy anointing. Because this, anointing, this kind of anointing cannot leave you comfortable. Cannot just leave you look cute in your chair. This kind of anointing, you cannot, there is no way you're going to receive it and you keep it to yourself. When this kind of anointing comes, it's going to mess all your plans up. It's going to mess your routines. It's going to mess your personality. It's going to mess your rituals up. Samuel pours oil from the flask to the head of Saul. And that was the beginning of the change in Israel. God is not going to change your year. When we began 2021, many people were excited. They thought, Omuntu Awanya 2020, Tuyengide 2021. 2020, people were very excited. They had a lot of hope. Things didn't happen to their expectation. Now we, are, we, we started 2021 and people are very excited. They are saying, yes, this second half of the year is going to be mine. God is not going to change your year and overlook his inability to change you. God is not going to change your year and overlook his inability to change you. He wants to mess you with the oil. Once God anoints you, you will carry the stains of oil with you. Wherever you go, once he anoints you like this, you're going to carry the stains of the oil. You, they can pour water on you and you will not remain with the stains. They can pour milk on you and you will not remain with a stain. But, but once they pour this anointing oil on you, you remain with the stains. Now, the Bible says, and the prophet kissed him. A prophet is kiss 
was a sign of authority. The oil comes from God. The kiss comes from the prophet. What does it mean? The prophet and God are in agreement. That's why we say it will be there. Let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Praise the Lord. Child of God, God's interest right now is to change us as individuals. He wants to anoint you as a person. Now, this has nothing to do with the building. God is after us as individuals. Us as individuals. I've seen many times when a fast has been called and you find people hiding, eating. And then you're saying, Iye? I thought we are in agreement. Kati wano kugenda, kati binebido bia tulimu bia kwe baweka. Bekuwa kusiba no tasiba. Obanga mama afumbe mva, atena atandiko zili ya mwe bifi. Weba, weka, weka. Hallelujah. Our time is running so fast. Now, here in verses, uh, he told him to go down, he'll find the prophets and he'll prophesy with them. The time has come for us to change the friends, to change the circle of people around us. If we connect with the right people, we are going to prophesy with them. To some people, this season is to us to draw away with some people who don't add value into our journey with Christ Jesus. Before it was very hard to let them go, but you have an opportunity now. We are in the lockdown. You can't visit them. 42 days, they are enough to change the sack of friends. Some people, we would be far, but we have been hindered by the circle of friends we are having. There are things we want, we want to do, but they are pulling us down. Says, go and find the prophets. You are not a prophet, but go. You shall prophesy with them. This is the time for us to pray that we shall connect with the right people. God is doing something in the middle of this chaos. There is something, some of it, there has been a delay in everything you do. It wasn't by mistake that there has been a delay. No. God knew the right time when Samuel should be born. God knows. God knew the best time for you to prosper, for you to have a marriage you have been believing God for. God knew the best time, and it is the time we are launching into. That's why whatever we do in this season matters a lot. You remember the beginning of last year? The Lord spoke to us and said, it was the year of accident. It was the year of declaration meaning it was the year of the mouth. What the enemy did to us was that we had to put on a mask to cover the mouth so that we don't speak. Now we have entered this year closer to 2022. All of us, we are very expectant of what God is going to do and is what he's about to do. But then the same enemy has come with a big cheer. We are seeing our friends die. We are seeing our relatives die. So we have to keep our immunity high. What should we do? Eat. Avoid the fasting. Because when you fast, 
you will lose your immunity and you, you're vulnerable to COVID-19. You see the tricks of the enemy. And what would be better? Purpose to see God. Hide yourself in the house. Fast your 21 days. Not eating, drink water. Don't move anywhere. Keep in your house. Let there be consecration. Hmm? I've not showed you here where David, where Saul had to go into consecration. This season, children of God, we must get into consecration. We need a secret place. Each one of us needs to hear from God, not the prophets to hear for you. Many people have been running to prophets who are telling them the colors of their underwears, the colors of their knickers. That, does that matter anymore? Doesn't matter anymore. We really need to hear what God says. For me, he told me what is going on. It is the atmosphere of change. He told me in our nation, Uganda, there is an atmosphere of change. I don't know if this term of five years shall end. But one thing I'm sure of, there is an atmosphere of change going on in our country, going on in God's kingdom. There are people who are going to die because God is trying, is bringing order. There are ministers who will go, not because they are sinners, no. It's because their time to go has come. Let each one of us carry his own cross. God is bringing order to his kingdom. Whatever has been happening in the kingdom of God, in our churches, what God is doing is bringing order. When we say let's repent, let's personalize this message. Let it be personal. Take it personal. Hallelujah. Don't say, hey, they have prayed for us. The pastors are fasting for us. The ministers are, no. This anointing is not for the ground, it's for the head. It is for the head. Allow me to end here. Because it's our time is first spent. We are supposed to end at 10. Sorry, I came in late. Uh, I was uh, not feeling well the whole day. And I just asked uh, Elder Paul to give me a few minutes to prepare, 15 minutes. That's why I came in late. I was not feeling well. I purposed to do uh, some jogging. And after jogging, I was feeling much better. I was very fine. So I noticed I would do this. But the Lord had already given me the word that we are in the season of the atmosphere of change. So thank you so much. When we get another time, we shall continue with it. Today I was doing it in Jab Deb Jab Zenim Kula Kula Mangwao. The saga that time we impiteko. But uh, thank you so much, our pastors, uh, for the opportunity for us to deliver the word of God for God's people. Uh, can we say prayer in one minute? May, may we say a prayer in one minute? Yes, please. Okay, let's pray. Each one of us, speak to God. Man, yes, just Lord. One minute. We thank you for the moment of the season of God. We thank you for this okay, season. Let's each one of us speak to God in one minute. minute. Thank you for in the, the mighty season. name of Jesus. In this time, oh God, we thank God, you, God, Jesus, for your good God, God. God. Thank you that you are the God that changes God, seasons you're ready for and times. The anointing. And you brought us to the place post. of transition, oh God. God. Transition in the church, transition in the nation. Transform me, oh God. Transform me unto you, oh God. Renew my strength, oh God. Give us a every father to miss out on this transition with your grace. Give us a grace, Father, to touch this transition, oh God. Give us grace for the nation to 
trans to God. God. As we trans to God, may we be transitioned, translated. We pray to your we friend. shall live, we, we shall not do die. You want us to be a church. church. May the church become what the purpose of us to become, oh God. Romo We thank you for the speed of acceleration. We thank you, Jesus, the times are flying. Jesus, bless you, Lord. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, Mondays. And as you were sharing the word, I was reminded in, I think it was the month of April. I think it must have been the month of April when we had a revival week, when we were called to repentance, I quite never understood why God demanded repentance of us. But I remember uh, telling the church at that time that God never calls the church to repentance unless he's about to do something big. You know, so I had no idea we were going to walk into a season of change. So here we are. And thank you for sharing that word with us. And uh, church, we have two important engagements tomorrow. We said 2 p.m. We are back here for corporate uh, prayer altar for one hour between 2 to 3 p.m. And then at night, we will be back at 20 minutes to 9 for revival week. So gather all your friends and bring yourself over to both of those meetings so that we can seek the face of God and operate and walk into this atmosphere of change. We thank God for Revival Week. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm feeling revived. I'm feeling exalted to, to a new level this week. And I thank God for every word that we've had and for the week that has been before us. And may God watch over you. May God bless you and keep you. May he continue expanding his word in your life May he shine his grace upon you. May his protection watch over you and your entire household. And in the name of Jesus, the darkness shall not come anywhere near your household. For the grace of the Lord shall protect you. The diseases of the Egyptians, he has removed them from our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And good night, and God bless you. Let's meet again tomorrow. Thank you, Pastor. The word.